Hey, good morning, everyone. Today, we'll be forecasting unemployment using an auto machine learning package called PyCarrot. So let's go ahead and get it installed, and we'll be importing data sets and time series. It's going to take a little bit, but I really like this package because for most of your forecasting needs, it's wrapped up in PyCarrot, and it does a lot of the heavy mathematical lifting for you. And the package comes with pretty simple, I guess what you would call a process that you can run most data through. And um, I'm really excited to use it. And along with MetaProfit, I think I'm going to be using uh, this to do a lot of my forecasting needs to um, get get you know just to make things faster and and keep all of the forecasting needs under one one hood for example um, and then we're going to be using nasdaq data link another alternative finance data uh, source that i've been really enjoying lately and then of course we're going to in import those and all we really need from the usual suspects is pandas i'm going to get my API key and we're gonna call the unemployment data. It only goes up to 2020. So we're gonna be pulling 2014 through 2019, the end of 2019. And uh, we initialize the time series forecasting experiment and we set it up putting through our data frame and setting some of these variables here that you can um, look up on your own. Uh, one thing I do want to note is the fold is just going to be two. Typically, you'd want to do maybe more, maybe like five. Um, and just to save time, I'm going to just set it to a lower a lower number. And you can see it provides a bunch of different information about our data frame that we can use to you know sort of set up the rest of our process you can see that there is some seasonality to our data frame here with unemployment um, along with so much other information that you could uh, that you could use but moving on we can plot uh, different elements of the table so you can see here it's got pretty much graphs that you've probably seen before histogram you know, the ACF and the PACF. Um, you know, if you're familiar with forecasting, these graphs are going to be look familiar. QQ plot, that's sort of a new one that people don't see a whole lot. Um, and then the periodogram, which is also a, a newer plot that most people don't see in regular decomposition packages. Um, but, you know, this is just an easy way to call that. You just call the diagnostics and it provides all this information, which I think is really cool and really useful. We can do the cross-validation split and plot it, and it shows you exactly what that's going to look like. Um, again, like I said, because we've set this to two, it's only going to do it twice. But if you set it to five, for example, you'd have five lines here um, with different you know, cross-validation splits. Um, so again, this just makes it really useful to perform those functions in the package and also visualize exactly in the dates what's going on. Um, of course, if you increase the amount of folds, the longer the computation power is going gonna, is, is gonna to be, as well as the computation power you're going to need in order to complete that function. Since I'm doing it on Google Colab and, and just in terms of time, um, we're only going to be doing it twice. The check stats is a really useful method to call. Um, you can See here, it gives you the test of the summary, and it gives you the length, the average, median, deviation, kurtosis, skewness, all sorts of things. The test statistic for the white noise, the p-value for the white noise, um, the ADF for stationarity testing, p-values are all 5%, so there's no statistical significance on any of these tests. But um, this is a really interesting um, method that you can call, and you can even um, for instance, if you just wanted, say, the summary, you could call that, and it would just provide information on that summary statistic. 
or and you can change this to white noise, whatever you want it to be, or like we did earlier, you can just not call anything and see all of the different tests that you're performing on your uh, data. One thing we can do is, so what I'm doing here is creating a variable called best pipelines, and we're comparing the models that are in PyCaret, and we're sorting it based on the average absolute performance error. This is going to take quite a bit of time, so just bear with me until it's done. Uh, again, if you had this set for a full to five, it would go through each one of the models performing five folds on each to see which one um, performs the best in terms of the average absolute performance error. And it tells you which one it's working on. So at the moment, it's doing the auto, auto ARIMA model, um, which seems to take a really long time. I don't know why, but um, it was crashing earlier tests of this notebook when I was doing more than two folds. And hopefully we can get past this one soon. There we go. Um, it's just going to go through each one. There's a lot of them. There's 130 different models that it's comparing. So in a sense, this is maybe my favorite part of this package because there are a bunch of different forecasting models that one could use on their data set. And sometimes you intuitively know which models are going to work better than others, but I think just being able to set up the code variables to compare each model based on what metric that you want um, is super useful and you can just run it and forget it and it's going to select the best pipelines based on the variables that you've chosen here. Um, like I said, it does take some time, especially if you're gonna do cross-validation more than twice. It's going to take a lot of time and you're going to need the GPU uh, or the VRAM to handle it. But if you can do that, I would definitely suggest doing so because it sort of just takes away any kind of judgment error that you might have or experience level error that you would you might come across by um, not testing different models on your data. This does it for you automatically. So let's just uh, bear with me here until this finishes and then we'll continue with our, our next cell here. Okay, great. So it's compared all of the different models within its package and it's sorted through which ones perform the best. Um, we can also easily tune the models in each pipeline um, just by calling the tune model method and we're just going to for loop the through the list of models that we've collected in the previous um, cell. And we're going to tune each one. And then we're going to print out the best pipelines tuned. Excellent. So it's gone ahead and fitted two folds for each of the 10 candidates. Um, this is, again, I, I know I keep coming back to this, but if you set the fold at the very beginning to more than two, it's going to obviously do more fitting right in this section of the process, um, which might yield better results. So again, you know, it's I'm just doing this for time considerations. Um, so excellent. Now, the next really cool thing about PyCare is you can blend the model based on their averages. Um, just by calling this blend models method here. Um, it does take some time, it's relatively quickly. Um, it's obviously highlighting you know, the, the, the metrics here. You can see that we're down to 0 0.0218 or 0 0.029 or 2.22 here. Excellent. So now we can finally do some predicting. So we're gonna create a variable we're going to be using our blended model to predict um, on our data. And you can see here we have the ensemble forecaster with our metrics here. And we can plot it. And you can see down here, uh, we have an interactive plot of the unemployment rate across the years here. And you can see that there's definitely some seasonality to it. 
um, that the models have taken into account already. And the orange line is the forecast and the blue line is the out of sample uh, true values. And it's fairly close, like there's definitely some error here, but it, depending on your use case, this might be an acceptable uh, forecast. Um, one thing that we can do is, I mean, this is just validating the model's performance. Uh, if we call the finalized model, we can then plot it and see what it believes will be the forecast for a true out of sample use case. So whereas before we were validating on this last section here, the, this plot is showing where the model forecasts the next six months of the data or the unemployment rate. So it's kind of interesting. It thinks it's gonna shoot back up at the beginning of the year where it was at the beginning of the year last year and sort of do this similar dip that we see um, consistently across the years. So we probably do have information on this data. We'd have to get it outside of the NASDAQ data link, considering this was back in 2020, um, to see if this is truly an accurate um, forecast. But we kind of know that the error is going to be somewhere in here, this 0, 3, 2, um, you know, performance metric here. And finally, we can just call that Y prediction. And instead of plotting it, we can just, you know, see what it believes will be the unemployment rate for, for those months, for the next six months in 2020. So again, to reiterate, uh, I think this auto ML pie carrot package is extremely useful. I'm going to be exploring it in future videos. Um, if you have data that you'd like me to look at, please let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to do so. I hope everyone enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.